for tutorial for NoCoHQ. And today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make external API calls from within your Adalo application. Um, so there might there are many use cases for that. So let's say you wanna create a thing when something happens in your Adalo database, you wanna trigger an email to be sent using SendGrid. Um, you wanna notify uh, someone else, you wanna notify one of your other applications. So the use ca cases are quite endless and using APIs really allows you to extend the functionality of your application by a lot. Um, and you can do this in the Dalo by using so-called custom actions and that's, this is what we're gonna take a look at. And for this example, what we're gonna do, I, I create a simple contact form here. So let's say in our app, we have like a contact page where you can send over um, or users can send over contact requests and click on submit. And then what you could do under normal circumstances would be just, okay, I have a collection here in my database, which is called contacts. And when a user submit, submits one of these forms, a new contact form is created. However, you might also uh, want to send over these contact forms to a Google sheet. You might want to send them over to another application or be notified via email, uh, create uh, maybe a new um, Asana or Trello um, yeah, um, to-do page for your uh, employees. So again, a lot of use cases and this is probably, this is only possible using um, API calls. So what we're gonna use for this specific example is um, Zapier because Zapier is um, perfect as it allows us to kind of receive the data from Adalo first and then do whatever we want afterwards, okay? so. We're gonna do this by using a catch hook from Zapier, then receiving the data from our Adalo application, whatever the user inputted here in the contact form. And then once you have this data, you can add as many steps here as you want. You could create the entry in a Google Sheet, you could uh, send an email, create a Trello board, and so on and so forth. So Zapier is um, a good, um, good tool for that. Uh, but you could obviously just create the direct API request. If you just wanna do one thing, you can also just make an API call to this one service. So let's jump right into it. Um, again, I created this contact form here, really simple, three inputs, message, email, and a name. Okay, and I have a button here, which says submit and currently doesn't do anything. And we can, uh, as always, go here and add an action and we can link to another page. We can create a, a database entry in our uh, Adalo app. But what we wanna do, we wanna create a custom action. As of now, we don't have any custom actions here. We can just create a new custom action. And this is what we're gonna do now. So we're gonna click on that. And Adalo asks us what the name should be. This is just for yourself, so you can always identify it. In this case, we're gonna call it send contact info to Zapier, all right? Great. The type in this case is create because we wanna create something, we wanna send over data, all right? So let's click next. And this is the actual API request page where you can make the call, you can uh, define the method, um, add header data, obviously add the body data, and so on and so forth. So um, what you would do here now is you would add the API endpoint depending on where you wanna make the call to. Um, if, you, if you're not sure how APIs work, I would advise you to take a look at one of our other tutorials where we go more into detail on how API calls work, what the, the, the reason is behind them and just the overall functionality. Um, but what we're gonna do now here is we're gonna head over to Zapier. And what I did, I simply created a new Zap, um, just a default Zap here, I just created one. Uh, and as the trigger, I defined the Zapier catch hook. Okay, it's webhooks by Zapier, and we wanna use the catch hook, which means that Zapier kind of waits for a new post put or get request. So it just waits for a request to this URL. And this is exactly what we're doing. Uh, we are making a request to this catch hook from our Adela application. And then once this is triggered, we can do something with this catch hook, with the data received from this catch hook. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna click continue and Zapier will give you this custom webhook URL and all you have to do basically is just copy it, okay? And this will be your API endpoint. So let's head back to Adalo and just paste that here under API base URL. And that's all you need. Um, the method is gonna be post. Again, we wanna send over some data and you will not need any authorization or any headers. Um, this is just the way Zapier works. From many other API calls, API services, you will need some kind of authorization so you would usually do that by adding a header here and then sending the data here over so an api key and authorization but again we don't need that okay 
What we do need here is the body where we're going to define what is sent over. But before I'm going to enter the body, we actually have to define the inputs that a dollar receives from our custom action. Okay, so these are kind of the variables that we give over that are then used in the API call. So what I what I want to do, I want to click on add item, I want to add a text, and we want to give over the name of the user that entered the contact form. And we need an example value just to test the API call. So in this case, okay, so let's just have it as Samuel. Okay, next, I want to add the email. Okay, um, so it's going to be called email. And the example, let's just have Sam at nopage.com all right and at last we have the message itself so again name is called message and as an example i'm gonna have hi my name is sam all right let's take done and we can now use these inputs here in our body by using these dynamic values that we just created you can see these are exactly identical um and um yeah we have access to these three inputs now now what we have to do, we have to define our um, JSON body. Um, JSON isn't too complicated, so just follow what I what I do. Um, obviously, it gets more complicated if you have like nested structures, but for this simple structure, um, uh, you can just follow what I do. Um, and um, otherwise, I would always advise to look into the API documentation. They will give you some examples. Uh, and then simply copy these examples and adjust them. That's the best thing you can do. So what I'm just going to do, I'm going to have um, curly brackets, open and close. Okay. And I'm going to um, add some space between them. And then all we have to do, we need three lines for our three um, inputs. So let's have three lines. Okay. Then all you have to do is have the, basically the name of the parameter and then equals whatever the value is. Okay. So bear with me. So for example, we want to send over our name oh. we want to send over our name and our name is whatever this here is so let's just have a dynamic value uh, value name you have to add a comma next we want to send over the email and this is gonna be uh, this is a bit weird the editor here and this is gonna be the email variable all right let's have a comma return and at last the message which is going to be the message value right and the last value um, you should not add a comma okay and that's our basic json structure really simple as you can see uh, so let's go ahead and test that but before i want to go to zapier back and i want to click on um, test trigger and let's wait for this trigger to run here so it's loading let's actually go back here test trigger and let's try to test it again okay so let's go here and let's run a test request okay so this, it says the test is successful the url call was this um and this was returned by this api call just the status success and all of this id and stuff we don't need that um that's just information sent over by zapier so let's go to zapier and let's actually take a look at it if it worked. So let's load more. Awesome, request B was pulled just zero seconds ago. Let's take a look at that. Great, so as you can see, we defined, okay, in this webhook call, um, we gave the name Samuel, we gave the email Sam at NoCoHQ, and we gave the message, hi, my name is Sam. So all three values were um, submitted successfully, and we now have this data here in Zapier. And that's basically it, to be honest. Um, you can now go ahead and save the custom action. And now you can see, okay, all right, when this is clicked, the submit button is clicked. I wanna send contact data to Zapier. And now you can define these three e uh, these three inputs, these variables, which we defined in our API call. And obviously you wanna populate them with the input field. So under name, I wanna choose the form input. What is it? It's That's input two, three, and four, all right. So input two should be the name. The email should be input three and the message should be input four. All right. You could add subsequent actions. Okay. So um, change input values or whatever. Um, but as you can see under custom action, we now have to send contact data over to Zapier custom action, which is saved. And you could use this with all, with, throughout your whole application. But yeah, that's basically it. Now, now what happens if a user submits this contact form, um, the data is sent over. So let's actually quickly test that. I'm gonna just go here and preview the app, all right? Let's send over some other data. Let's, for example, um, 
let's fill this out. So this time my name is Max and my email is max at nopohq, all right. And that's just test and let's click on submit. Okay, nothing much happened, but let's take a look at Zapier. So let's look at our requests, load more. Awesome, we have request C, pulled in zero seconds ago, max, max at nopohq test. So that works perfectly fine. Um, what you would want to do is you want to reset the inputs maybe and show like a pop-up or whatever or an alert um, saying thanks for submitting your contact info. That's your bad user experience, but in general, this works fine. And now the rest is uh, up to you, obviously. Um, I won't go into detail here because we have a lot of tutorials on that, but you could add subsequent actions now where you say, all right, I want to create um, a new entry in a Google Sheet. And you now have access to the data received from this catch hook. Okay, so you could create a new row in a Google Sheet. You could say, all right, the name column should be populated with the name column, that was the, the name data received from the catch hook, the email, and so on. You could send over emails. You could make a Twitter post if you want to do that. You can create a Trello. Uh, board, um, send the data to Slack, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, um, that's basically it. Um, simple, but really, really helpful, um, and a lot of use case, as I mentioned already. And um, yeah, I uh, hope you learned something. If you want to learn more about Zapier and uh, APIs in general, uh, make sure to take a look at our other tutorials. Um, but that was it regarding custom actions in a dialogue. Bye.